So we're just here at the um, Weatherby service, uh, services, just being laughed at by the colleagues I'm travelling with, which is why I'm laughing a bit. And we've run away up to um, Crasto in Northumberland because a colleague of mine is running a retreat and Shirley and Karen who are travelling with me are um, going as retreaters and, and I'm going to teach them trance over the course of the weekend. So um, we are on our way, we're more than, no, I think we're about halfway there and we're all looking forward to a really great weekend. So we're here in Dunstan Hall and I've just given you a little bit of a tour. It's um, a lot of the place with lots of different nooks and crannies and all sorts of individual little rooms and um, it's an art and soul weekend. So Diane Wright is the spirit artist and she's going to be taking people through various um, aspects of spirit art. And I'm here to um, support people um, in uh, learning about um, trance mediumship. Um, so it's going to be a really exciting weekend and just a total get away from it all. Um, and hopefully we're going to have an amazing time. So it's Saturday morning and I'm on the retreat weekend that's being run by Diane um, Wright, which is an art and soul um, retreat weekend. So Diane is teaching spirit art and I'm here to run um, some trance sessions in the morning for people to get an understanding of trance if they're new to trance and to kind of just support and deepen um, and progress their trance if they've been sitting for trance before. So I'm sitting in um, what is um, a really... Um, bizarre place. It must have been storage um, years ago when the house was built. So it's, it's like a little cavern and um, it's um, all stone um, and it's quite, quite an enclosed space. So um, I wanted just to come and sit in here and, and be aware of the energies as well. And interestingly, there's um, a lady on the retreat who's also in my trans mentorship group and I've worked with her for a number of years and she's actually, she sits for physical mediumship as well. And um, because this is a really enclosed space, it'd be really interesting to see how she works if she actually wants to sit and do any, any trance in this space. But um, I did promise, didn't I, a couple of vlogs ago that I would share um, some of the experiences that I'd had. And, and it was when I was talking about there are experiences you know to be true and you can't logically explain them. So I just thought while I'd got quite a few minutes that I would sit here and talk to you about an experience I had um, where I actually went up um, into spirit and I was in Spain I was on holiday it was August and you know what the heat is like in Spain in August it was really hot couldn't sleep very well and ended up getting up at about five o'clock in the morning making a cup of tea kind of sitting on my balcony watching kind of um, all the street workers cleaning the streets etc and so forth anyway then I thought I'll go and lay on the bed again and just have kind of another half an hour, 40 minutes. And as soon as I lay on the bed, I felt myself shooting upwards. And um, I wasn't working with spirit at this point in time, so I had no idea what was happening, but I felt myself shooting upwards and I found myself in this room. And um, as I was aware of myself and as I was aware of the room, everything was light and it was different densities of light. So I was light and the, the, the walls of the room were just pure light, but they were a different density of light than I was. And I remember um, looking around the room, and I say looking because I wasn't aware of necessarily physical body, but I remember being aware of trying to move in the room. And I, and I did move because I could feel my, and be aware of my energy moving, but wherever I moved, I was always in the center of the room. Um, and then I became aware of these three other energies that were also in the room with me. And um, there was an overpowering and overwhelming sense of love and I've never felt anything like it. And I knew that I had to listen to what they were saying and I didn't hear the words, I felt them. Um, and they said to me, you must experience the pain of true grief. And as soon as they said that, I felt myself falling and, and, and kind of coming back down quickly and the next second I was I was kind of back laying on my bed in my body and I knew immediately that I had been in spirit and I can't tell you um, how I knew that 
Um, I just knew it. I can't logically explain it. You know, I didn't have any rationale for it. Um, but I, I definitively knew that that's what had happened. And my instincts when I, when I was kind of back and aware of myself was to think, oh my God, and think of the words that were said, which, you know, where you must experience the pain of true grief. And, um, and the split second after I thought about the words, I dismissed the worry that came with them because of the sense of overwhelming love that I had felt. And that experience of love is something that I will never forget. I remember it to this day. And when I work with spirit in the trance state, um, I often experience that same sense of overwhelming love as they start to blend in with me or as they're moving, as we're moving out of the blending process. Um, but I, I didn't know, I hadn't worked with spirit at that point in time, so I had no idea of, of what anything was, but I knew definitively um, that I'd been with the spirit in that moment and that that aspect of us, that essence of us that, that's in the spirit is not of the physical at all in any way, shape or form. Um, interestingly, you know, I think there are always, there's always a reason for the experience that, that we have and um, grief is the most powerful mix of complex emotions that we have and grief opens up, um, opens us up in ways that nothing else can. And interestingly, when my grandfather died, which was a couple of years after that experience, and when my father died, um, you go through that, that process, that physical process of, 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 of grief and grieving and, and all of those emotions. But I remember on both of those occasions, um, those words coming back to me, you must experience the pain of true grief. And I allowed myself on both occasions to go into the feeling of grief. So often in in the world nowadays, we, we have to have a stiff upper lip, we have to move through it. We're not actually allowed to grieve properly because we have to get on with life. And on both of those experiences of, of, of grief for me, I've allowed myself to move into the emotion. I've allowed myself to feel it. I've allowed myself to really be in the emotion, the pain, all of the things that we feel physically when we, we lose somebody. And in both cases, they've, they've been allowing myself to be that, has, has changed me, has opened me in a way that I don't believe would have happened if I hadn't allowed myself to actually move into the process of grief rather than just to move through it. I think I've pressed the right bar, but I'm never sure. <laughs>
Fantastic Leslie Curtis, and she was singing Time After Time, which is actually George's favourite song.